All right, hello and welcome to another run of Master of Magic with me, Internet Celebrity Brad Pritchard. Gonna try to do this one in a different manner. Going to try to actually only record the parts that I need, edit it into something tolerable, and make a little streamlined experience on it. One, I think it'll be better for you guys to watch. Two, I want to get this one in before the new big update arrives in the game. So I'm going to take a page from the book suggested by my guy Kibitz and try to be an artificer. Uh, as you have noticed, if you've watched my previous two series on this game, well, artifacts are hard to come by and they largely all look kind of the same. I think there's something not so great about it right now. I hope there's some updates to it. Uh, before we get to my wizard and our race, though, let's take a look here. I'm going to leave all the settings from the previous game intact. So three AI wizards, uh, AI skill advanced, neutral armies advanced, layer defense advanced. Not so sure about that one. That one's kind of killing me, by the way, but I'm going to leave it because I don't want to go to beginner. So they're advanced. Magic intensity powerful. Uh, new events included. Uh, battle movement cost and maximum cost is two. Yeah, that seems fine. Um, all tiles cost one, which kind of ruined anything. Full cost is also... I don't know. Full cost is I should probably try it sometime. World size small, small is big enough. Initial economy normal, um, which seems fine. And no starting here. You can't start with Vishan the Dervish. Not gonna do that. You know, I've, I don't know. I should try that sometime too, because that might be pretty good as well. Number of neutral towns average. I had that at many on the first run. Did not like it. A uh, few would be tolerable, but I'm not gonna do it. All right. So keeping all those settings, I did like them a lot. Custom wizard as always. I'm gonna choose her because she looks very nice. Uh, I don't know what to name her, so I'll name her for her crown. Uh, nice crown. Not a great name. I'm not going to lie about it. Uh, and now, in addition to Artificer, which gives you half price magical item creation and both enchant item and create artifact spells, cost one pick, take that. I'm also going to add Famous. The Wizard's Renown carries over even to these new, wiz new worlds. They begin the game with extra 25 fame. Being famous doubles the chance of the wizard hiring heroes, recruiting mercenaries, and buying magical items. Famous costs two things. So famous is, more, is very expensive, and it's not so much the starting fame. I think that doesn't matter at all. I've, and from what I've noticed, fame just doesn't matter the way you think it would. But double the chance of hiring heroes. If I'm going to make artifacts, I need heroes. And trying life magic, because I haven't tried it. Uh, life magic is a little rough at the beginning of the game and you're never going to have anything like flame strike or the insane unit uh, upgrades that uh, sorcery had. What you will have is you'll have healing, you'll have Lionheart, uh, I hope you get Lionheart in books, and at the beginning you'll have heroism, so you can cast a spell to make your uh, units elite temporarily, and that's really, really nice, because uh, that'll, that'll win you early game battles, that's all. That's kind of all it takes to win, to win early game battles. So. Uh, spells to take, I won't be casting Just Cause, that uh, gives you plus 10 fame and reduces unrest. I, I'm, I'll pick that up eventually, but I don't think I need that right now. I think Holy Armor is good. Uh, armor increased by 2 is kind of a big deal. Uh, Starfires, unless you're fighting Chaos and Death creatures, is not that big of a deal. So I'm going to take Bless. This also protects against Chaos and Death. I think that, I, that works better than trying to attack creatures. So that's the way we're going to go with this one. And, uh, yeah, let's fire up the world. We choose our race. I'm going with the High Elves. Haven't tried them yet. I picked up some Longbowmen and Elven Lords in the last run, but I didn't really get to try out the Elven Lords. I didn't get high-level Longbowmen. The Longbowmen I had did not seem great. Uh, we got some problems, though. Growth rate is very slow, uh, which is, I don't think, that big of a deal. So this is not by percentage, right? It's just 20 people. I don't think that's, I, I think that's fine in all cases. So other modifiers plus two magic resistance, plus 10% chance to hit bonus, and forester skills, which is nice. So I'll be able to move through woods at the cost of one. Uh, my normal units are more expensive because of all these buffs, which is a bit of a problem. And plus 0.5 power for farmers, workers, and even rebels. So this is good. That will help me build my magic power early. So I'm gonna choose the blue flag and begin. Uh, hopefully I'll catch you right back at the beginning when I, uh, and tell you about my first town. And here's our initial town, Esterwood. Once again, the computer's placed it just off the coast, which you hate to see. Uh, woods are available and hills are available though. So I'm not gonna be able to get a merchant's guild or anything or a shipyard, but I will be able to get a sawmill, critically important for longbowmen, and a miner's guild later, just important for having the city be overall 
functional. One thing you'll notice about the High Elves, Unrest is at 10% despite being only at 4 population and having a swordsman here in the town. Uh, and I can't really produce another unit right now because I have plus zero food. So I'm gonna I'm gonna send the settlers out on their own. This is definitely a risk, but I don't want that unrest to go up. And I'm gonna at some point need to build another unit to quell this unrest a bit because that's going to be a problem in the early game. Uh, as you see, we already have a granary, uh, and I should be able to build those three as soon as I found the second town. So. Uh, well, well, we'll start with a library. I might change the production in the middle to a spearman if I can get my food up. Uh, other than that, we'll see what research I want to do initially. And everything's expensive, right? Um, I'm going to pick up starfires. Might be useful. And I'll pick things back up when I found my first outpost. Or not, you'll quickly see that I have run into a clack on town. I just have settlers, so I can't defeat it. Uh, settlers aren't going to be doing any attacking. I found this a turn faster because settlers move faster than actually two turns to this hill, faster than swordsmen. But I can't attack the town. I would attack the town and win if I had my swordsmen with me. Uh, I am now at this point going to send my swordsmen in this direction and hope that I can take it and also back these guys off. But I, they could murder my settlers right now and this game could be ruined, in which case I'll probably start over. But uh, if they, I don't believe they'll take their, their one unit out of town to attack them, but this planes, so they obviously could. Hopefully I can get this guy somewhere safer and found a colony somewhere and defeat these Clackons. And I'll just accept the magic spirit. Why not? And bog through the orc, orc warriors around. I don't think I can justify his price right now. I am not making money. I'm making zero. Otherwise, I would take him. Uh, he's not having a mountaineer along with your elves is awesome. So you can go through mountains, hills, and forests. But I can't afford this guy. My swordsmen have arrived here at Dim Raz. There still is only one spearman unit. I will be attacking. They like my chances with magic. They hate them. I don't hate them. They like them a little less than magic. I will cast uh, heroism on this unit in an attempt to uh, make sure I can beat these clackons. Because I think that's the plan. I will get them up to elite, and it should be good enough. Um, they, I believe, have eight figures in their unit, which is rude. I only have six, which is part of why they have that bit of an advantage. They only have one attack, by the way, which doesn't seem great, but one times eight is... Some say eight. I don't fucking know. They don't have any special skills. They're just spearmen. They have four armor. I have... What? I have a mere two armor. So there's a little bit of a discrepancy there. Um, Heroism is the only spell I'll be able to cast. I could put holy armor on this instead, but that was only... A, uh, and that, that would get them to plus two on that. But heroism should do... Oh, I can't afford to cast heroism. I've made a tactical blunder. I guess holy armor is my only choice here, or try healing later. Or holy weapon, but holy weapon... Um, it, it gives them a plus to hit, to hit chance, and I don't think that's as good as increasing my defense. Let's try it. We're wading right in. They could not hurt me. So far, so good for Holy Armor. Uh, so far, so bad. As I accomplished very little that turn, but we're going to get this. Their last figure, but we can't get him. Just can't get him. And there we do get him. So it wasn't pretty, but it was good enough. And we now have a town. We get no fame. We do get a little bit of gold. Um, I don't want to lose fame because I actually have fame. I wouldn't mind destroying it, but their population is pretty good. They're buildings are terrible as usual you can see my town now uh, i am producing plus one food so the first things first is to build a clack on spearman it's gonna take the rest of my life they're not happy uh can't really blame them can't really do this that's right that's the max so this is gonna be a slow burn on this town but i will and it's gonna be really bad because i uh, it's already at zero i'm gonna be sending my unit away from them uh immediately they're gonna go back to town on the same turn, we got good news for my settlers. They have found not one, but two good locations uh, on the river 
but I can't, it doesn't look like it's on the ocean. So I'm, do I need to do better on that? Let's at least move one spot forward. No. So what's the, what's the best place here? This is 28, this is 28, this is the road plus 15. This one is slightly closer to this town, this one's slightly closer to that town, so strategically, they're both well placed. I'd like to be on the ocean, but I don't see that happening just yet. I am going to put it here. Give me a little bit more room up north to perhaps build uh, my third elf city, fourth city overall. New outpost coming in. It has been named Wise Tree, and it has, of course, one unit stacked in it. And uh, you can see a bit of ocean from here. Uh, swamps over here, and this will be one, two, three, four. So a little bit of lost opportunity down here, but I, you can see that I do have mountains, woods, and a bit of what I believe to be iron on this tile. Coal, excuse me, coal. So there we go. That will be done in uh, some turns. And we got three cities early. Uh, they are very tightly packed. Uh, which is in general a good thing, I think. And let's see where we go next. A few turns later, Shuri the Huntress has arrived to offer her services. I want to take her. My financial situation is now barely good enough. And she can become very good in the long run, as you've seen in the past. And especially with my uh, enchanting abilities. It's going to be a while before I enchant because I don't have any magic. But she can also do tons of scouting for me early with her pathfinding ability. So I'm going to take her and use her for that. On the same turn as Shuri the Huntress arrived, our outpost of Wise Tree has expanded. So we'll be building houses for a good long while. It's going to take a while. Maximum population says 30,000. That's kind of nice. And Starfires has finally been completed. We'll pick new research. And as you can see, there's a lot of expensive stuff here that's just not going to be useful for a very long while. Uh, so I'll just be choosing Dispel Magic because I'll learn it sometime this century. Shuri has already helped me start to find everything to the north of my city. Uh, it is the north edge of the map, so Tundra's appeared. I'd love to build on this island, but it would be absolutely terrible. But what I can see is that I can build one very good city on the coast and one so-so city on the east coast. I think I, can, I don't... One, two, three, four. So I can get two good cities there and there. It's going to be a while before I can build settlers, but that's the plan. Here on turn 17... Esterwood has finally completed its library. I have plus one uh, food, but I can't really use it because <laughs> I, I'm still building a, an, a spearman for the Clackons down south, and they desperately need that. I'd love to build another unit and try to get this rebellion down, but it's not going to happen for the foreseeable. Here in Dimraz, population is now four, and they have finally completed their spearmen. As you can see, the unrest is still insane. We are, we did add population, so we're getting more food. Uh, boof. I think the wise move here is just to let this town languish a bit, uh, start building basic buildings, and once my sawmill is done, build another spearman or two, if I can, for the capital. On turn 24, you see that Shuri has discovered the entire continent uh, over here to the east. Uh, there's just some sites. There's no additional neutral or wizard cities. So lots of room for expansion. You have to map out uh, how I want to place my new settlements. And already on turn 28, Shuri has mapped the area south of Dimraz, and it's very, very small. In fact, there's not even room for another city down here. I saw plenty of land to build on here for the foreseeable future. It's nice that there's no other wizards in my area, but it's mission critical to my next town be on the coast so I can start building ships, not in the, in the near term, but in the medium term so I can find more land to settle. Unless I can build up enough, a big enough stack to get through the magic gate, which I very much doubt. And now I've learned to spell magic. I have a feeling there's not going to be anything very affordable here. Just Cause Summoning Circle. I can't imagine moving to Summoning Circle for a very long time. Guardian Spirit, I just don't need. We'll take Just Cause. On turn 24, Esther Wood has finally completed their sawmill. Uh, as you see, they're up to 7,000 population. Shuri is back in town, providing a little bit of a stop to the rebellion. I am now able to build Longbowmen. But first, 
I'm going to build Spearmen to try to get rid of the Rebellion. And after that, it's time to start making some money, building things like Shrine. Then I start building a Longbowman stack to see if I can make that work. And here's the first offer of an artifact I've received. It is obviously trash. I have no money. Uh, merchants will not come to you with items that are more expensive than you can afford. I will obviously be rejecting it. It's turn 41, and I've screwed up the town of Wise Tree. I didn't do anything with it before. Usually, I'd like to start on population four to start building things. I missed it, and it's now population five. I'm currently building a high elf spearman to get this down to 10%. It's not going to be enough, honestly, so we'll see how that goes. On turn 44, uh, Esterwood is now producing well, and they've finished their marketplace. So I am rolling in money right now, which is awesome. Uh, I need to also be rolling in food, however. So I'm going to build that. I'm going to build the shrine. I'd like to build the, these longbowmen as noted. However, I do not think the time is quite right because I don't have the food to feed them. Uh, but after I build the shrine, and also, if I want to take units out of the city, having that shrine is important, then Shuri needs to go with the longbowmen when they go. I've been offered two high men swordsmen here which I will obviously be rejecting, but there is a, a cause for concern as that makes me believe that high men are somewhere on the map, uh, hopefully only as a as a neutral group, but even then, uh, somebody's got paladins and not on my continent. And I have now reached turn 50, which is where I'm gonna end this video. Uh, there will be a bit of a change of plans here in Esterwood. They are currently building the farm, will be done in two turns. I am not building a shrine. I want a shrine, but we need settlers, and it takes no time for us to produce them right now. So we'll be... Oh, that's if I take it now. But uh, we'll finish the farmer's market in two turns, and then build settlers before building our shrine. It's time for us to start expanding. We need to get these cities going to build our economic power. But Esterwood is doing well. 5% uh, unrest, which is fine. Uh, everybody's either in production or farming. Four units, including a magic spirit. This is kind of costing me mana. Over in Wise Tree, they they did get their uh, spearmen to go with their swordsmen eventually. They are back in rebellion though because they have rolled over into six. I do have enough food to take care of that, however. So I'm going to switch my production over, build the spearmen in two turns. That should get that unrest low enough where these people will actually work. Of course, I should have raised this city. The city is nothing but trouble. It does not work for me. They are building a granary, which will be awesome. But it's going to take them another seven turns. It isn't that bad, I suppose. But this unrest problem won't be going away anytime in the near future. It's a This is a very good location for a city. It's going to max 20,000. So the problem I'm going to have here is that this unrest is going to be very, very hard to get rid of. Uh, it would be much better to have a, <clears throat> a city of elves somewhere down here. I couldn't have really arranged it much better. I could have moved it here in the mad city over there and then I could have one more city down on the south coast, but that wouldn't really have helped me. These are not, these are not good locations. But the highlights of turns one through 50, uh, a, a mostly peaceful start. I know the whole continent. I've got a, a hero I actually really like. I can't build any artifacts for her just yet, obviously. Uh, I have a Clackon city, which if I once I get it later in the game, I'll be glad I have it, because it will be able to be my trade good city. Um, and it'll be able to produce t trade goods at a remarkable rate. It's going to be a long, brutal road to get there. But also, I'm on an island by myself. I got rid of the one neutral city. It's now part of mine. And there are no opposing wizards on the island. I've called it a continent a few times. It's more of an island. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the new format. It's a lot more action-packed. I haven't put the video together yet, obviously. I'm not sure exactly how long it's going to run. But... Let me know how you feel about the format down in the comments. I feel like intuitively it must be better, but maybe you like the more lethargic, easygoing nature of it. I do do occasional diversion. I mostly talk about the game, honestly. But let me know. I am open to any ideas. Uh, I will probably record at least one more in this format to get me through the weekend to have stuff to post. Is that true? That is true. Uh, but after that, I can switch back to the old format if you want. Let me know. Anyway, thank you for watching, and goodbye.